When you find many believers who operate like the world system, they don't know who they are. That's why you find many ladies today dressing naked to buy value. No, your value is not in your nakedness. Even if you are clothed. See, royals and nobles don't dress naked. You will never find any princess dressed naked. In fact, they, they are cloth, they, their wears are tucked to the neck. And they, even their hands, they wear gloves. Most of their gowns are long sleeve. You don't see, if you see their hand, it's a privilege. That's the mentality they have. When they come out, they wear socks inside easy wear. If they want to wear an easy wear. Because they know they value the command. They know that they are a one that to a generation. And when they come among you, you are blessed to have them. We are heirs of God. We are inheritors of divine investment, divine possibilities. That's the mentality of a Christian. And the Bible put this thing there deliberately for you to have a personality. A personality that is consistent with what God said about you. How can you think of taking over this world if you don't come as a prince? How can you fight over a territory if you don't come as one who understands the game of power and authority? If you come as a beggar, how dare you talk when nobles are talking? That's why even those who are beggars, he said he lifted the beggar from the dung here. He taketh him from that place of poverty and shame and he establishes him among princes that he may inherit thrones. You are an inheritor of thrones, brothers and sisters. We are heirs of God. See, have this mentality. If it's only one shirt you have, don't wear a rumpled shirt. When you get home at night, wash it, iron it. Come out tomorrow like a prince. You'll find many Christians, they are rumpled, their hairs are scattered, they don't even have time to brush, and they are running everywhere and saying, God is helping us. Relax, bro. Put yourself together. Square your shoulders. Walk like a man helped of God. How many princes have you seen jumping up and down? My brother. Well, no, 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 no. Princes walk, there's a disposition. Sometimes you see them fold their hands and they are in charge. You find a Christian fighting in the market. Is it me? No. Oh. Jesus said, if they, if they take your shirt, give them your coat. No, no, no. You can't find me fighting. No, 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 no. It's not consistent with nobility. There's a code with which we live. You want to fight? Just let the person go. Thank you. It's where? They want to banter wars with you. They are talking, waiting for you to talk. No, not me. Thank you. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. You walk away. You are a prince. You are a prince. You are an heir of God. Many don't know this. So they have, they have brought the name of God to disrepute. You find two women fighting. A Christian is involved. You find a thief. A Christian is involved. How did you de condescend to that level? Are you not aware that you have thrones to inherit? Are you not aware that there is an end state for you to take over? Are you not aware that you are noble? Nobility flows in you, sir. The prince of peace is called your brethren. Is your brother mentality god is putting this in scripture so you will know you will know you will know many of us need to know a christian is involved in every gossip hmm, me i don't know but it's well no problem it's okay too. Ah, come on and then when the whole secret comes out you put your head down in shame no he said what you hear in the dark shout it in the light what you hear in the house proclaim it on the rooftop Anything you say anywhere, you should be able to replay, replay, say it. Because there is integrity in you. You are a prince. We are heirs of God. Number three. Or number two. We are called witnesses. Acts 1.8. Not many days from now. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Peter was corroborating this fact. In 1 Peter 2.9. And he said you are a royal priesthood. God's own special people. God fought. To manifest the praises of God. So you come to prove to people the existence and the legitimacy of God and his ways. You are not just ordinary. You came here to prove and to validate the scripture. When the Bible says God heals, you are the proof. When the Bible says God blesses, you are the proof. You are, the, you, are the, you, are the, you are like God's exhibit in a law court. Everything God says, if it were to be queried in a court... You are the one they will bring as the evidence. And so your life cannot be anything short of everything God has said you are. This is why when you go through life, you go with faith and vehemence.
Many people think mediocrity is, is spirituality. And so when they find a man who knows where he's going and is conscious of the time, they say he's ambitious. And they start saying all kinds of things. See, don't let such people bother you. Their heart is full of bitterness. They want to say those things to discourage you. Ignore them. Make your journey through life. There's no time, sir. There's no time. We didn't come here to live forever. We came here to manifest God for a short period of time. And while you have that time, make sure you give your all. He said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. Don't fold your hand and relax. You are a witness. Check yourself out. How many places am I proving God's validity? God's existence? God's authority? God's faithfulness? How many persons am I impacting? How long do I have to stay here? These are the things that should form your consciousness. Because God is waiting in heaven for you to prove to that your neighbor that is God. He's waiting for you to prove to that person in your office that is God. And you are not aware. You are just relaxed. Thinking there is time. There is no time. Check yourself. You are 30. You are 40. You are 50. You have moved from at least four states already. You were born in one state. You moved to another state for your primary education. You went to another state for your university and secondary education. You, have, you are in another state doing business. You have already moved through four states. And you don't have any memoria in any of those four states. How many more states do you think you will enter before you go to heaven? And you think there's time. No, there's no time. You have to become conscious that God is waiting for you to prove to the world that everything he said is true. You are a witness. Number three. You are an ambassador. Second Corinthians 5.20 The Bible said we are ambassadors of Christ. So we came to this world to establish a government and a dominion. We came to this world to establish the ways of God. This is the consciousness that you have. While as a witness you came to prove and to validate God. As an ambassador you came to establish God's kingdom. And so God's kingdom begins first of all with his ways his lifestyle his character so if you come to any place you must not be intimidated in establishing god's character there if you come to a place people are stealing people are cheating be bold enough to tell them this is not good live a righteous life because you are an ambassador the reason you are here is because you represent a kingdom and so anywhere you find yourself becomes the constituency of god your house your job is an embassy and you are the ambassador there and so you must insist at all time at least anything that is under your influence must submit to the government of god the ones that are beyond you leave them and be growing but the ones that are under you from your family to those who work under you you must insist that the righteous kingdom must be established there and anybody who does not align you check them out because you're an ambassador I cannot walk into American embassy and say, give me a job, I want to walk. Okay. There's a protocol there. I can't budge in there like that. There's a protocol. And the high commissioner will insist that that protocol is followed. And although the building is in Nigeria, Nigeria don't have the authority in that premise. Because as far as bilateral law is concerned, that premise is America. And so that's how it works. So anywhere you are, God sees it as heaven. Your family, God sees your family as heaven. So it is your job to establish heaven in your family. Your business, God sees it as heaven. Because you are, that business is under your influence, it must come under heaven's influence. But many are not aware that they are ambassadors. These are the foundational defects in the minds of believers. And they reduce Christianity to religion. Finally, you are a pilgrim on the face of the earth. You are a pilgrim. God sent you here to look at this realm and to return back. This is not your home. Hebrews 11, 13. The Bible said we are pilgrims on the earth. Some persons feel this is their final destination. And so they want to kill themselves with pleasure. They don't remember that they came from somewhere and they will soon go back. Every time somebody dies, it's a reminder to you that you are a stranger here. I know when people die, you are weeping and say we will miss them. Be reminded that you too, you are going back. This is not your home. You are a pilgrim here. You can go to Dubai today and say, I love the city. I love, sir, you will come back. You will come back. You will come back. No matter how you fall in love with Dubai, you are snapping pictures and posting everywhere. Your home is Nigeria. When you finish snapping, you will come back. And if you refuse to come back, when you die, they will muscle your dead body back to your country. <laughs> Many are not aware 
that we came from heaven and we will go back until the new earth is created and God puts us. So this is not our home. So while you strive to be relevant here, be mindful that your major relevance should be in the world that is to come. Because many persons have invested only in this world and they have no investment in the world that is to come. Those are the kinds of people the Bible calls rich fools. Did you read Luke chapter 16? The man gathered his barn. He said, now my soul shall rest. I have filled my barn. And he was not rich with God. And that night, the Bible said, his soul was demanded of him. And he left everything he stored. He was rich in the world, but he was not rich with God. If you know you are a pilgrim, you will start striving to become rich with God. Because ultimately, that's where you will go back to. And that's why Jesus speaking, he said, what shall he profit a man? If he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul. Why? Because he will return to another world. And he may not have anything there. Whereas he has conquered the whole world. We must have that mindset. We are pilgrims. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oropo, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.